Kongres Współpracy Transgranicznej Lublin 2022. Bezpieczeństwo i Solidarność. Coroczne spotkanie praktyków współpracy transgranicznej z Unii Europejskiej i Partnerstwa Wschodniego. Trzy dni paneli, spotkań i debat liderów samorządowych, organizacji pozarządowych i ekspertów z całej Europy. Forum Partnerów. Giełda Grantodawców. Wizyty studyjne, warsztaty, koncerty i spektakle. Na żywo i online. Lublin, 5-7 października 2022. Zarejestruj się bezpłatnie na stronie kongres.lublin.eu. Witam serdecznie. Wracamy do spotkań kongresowych. Na początek informacja organizacyjna. Chciałbym zwrócić uwagę. I would like to uh, pay attention that the workshops uh, books in set of borders stories about the experience is not in this room, uh, but is not in in this room where we are now. It's in it's in a room next door. Now we are moving to talks concerning building solidarity, building a network of international solidarity, and it concerns people whom we haven't seen before. For people like me, and I do have some eight-month experience of being, in, being a prisoner, thinking about a place that makes you safe, that you can be safe, where you can be creative, that you may continue in your profession. I, this is something that I remember uh, uh, during these times of, uh, of, of difficult times of uh, martial law. And Lublin now is a space, is a place, uh, is a host for people who are endangered by persecution, uh, by imprisonment. And we would like to join an international network of shelter cities, uh, cities that say, that tell people, we can be your safe home. Uh, like in, in Middle Ages, uh, cities made you free. When you reached city, a city, you knew you were free. You, you, were, hmm, you, you, are, you will not be arrested uh, without good reason. So shelter cities allow people to be free in the spaces they create. And this is what we are going to talk about today. And that's the panel uh, we would like to have right now. Many thanks to uh, uh, many thanks for this almost philosophical opening of our meeting. I do have a similar approach. It's a talk about organization, so let's say a kind of management approach, like building a particular format of how cities can be shelters, shelters for people of culture, and also the talk about deeper issues, let's say ethical and philosophical aspects of all this. A good tradition requires that you say hello to the panelists and participants of the panel, so let me do it. As I can understand, we have five participants right now. Are we connected? I hope we are. Thank you very much. Thanks for this, uh, uh, for this insight. I'm sorry I get a little bit disorientated where I'm to look for. There are there's some screens. Okay, so to, for me to, to look best in the camera, I'll be look here. That's complicated. I'll try to manage. Anyway, looking at you and smiling at you, I say good afternoon. Let me start with presenting Professor Dominika Kasprowicz, representing a university, Jagiellonian University, and the director of the Institute of Culture, uh, Villa de Ciusza. Uh, you have this experience. You would like to join in of being a, of being um, a host 
gorąco powitać. And I would like host of a, uh, and also would like to uh, welcome Helga Lunde, Icorn executive director in Norway. So perhaps the, one of the first questions will be to you, uh, so that you give us uh, an outline uh, about the uh, Icorn uh, network, because maybe uh, among us here, the speakers and the panelists and those who participate uh, here and online, there may be some of us who are perfect, uh, perfectly in the know of what ICON is, but uh, the knowledge of some other people may need some kind of complementation com uh, expansion. Uh, let me also say hello to Robert Piaskowski, uh, ICON board member and program coordinator in Krakow. I had an opportunity, we had an opportunity to meet uh, before. And then let me also uh, wholeheartedly welcome uh, uh, to uh, Le welcome Lesia Pszczołka, uh, who is here with us in Lublin. Yeah. Uh, and it's and it's particular uh, and it's why it's so. Why well, I'm so proud to uh, to to welcome you here because you are the only. The, the only beneficiary, one could say. She is an artist and an activist. And uh, uh, when I think about it, when, I, when we talked about it yesterday with Lesha, this perspective of an artist participating in a program is, is crucial, is, is a core experience. Because this, that's the final, ultimate confirmation of what ICON is, how it operates, how it functions, Effective. and what kind of effect uh, ca uh, it, it can bring about. So obviously, I will perhaps, with each and every question I would like to talk about, I will refer to uh, uh, to, to Lesia. I'm Dariusz Jakimowicz. I'm representative of uh, uh, Mayor of Lublin, uh, uh, responsible for inclusion through culture. I've been working for a couple of months uh, for city of Lublin. I'm back to Lublin after some period outside. And one more maybe initial but uh, friendly uh, information. Um, I'm, I'm a substitute for uh, the original moderator, Michał Karapuda, who is head of the culture department uh, in uh, Lublin city office. Unfortunately, uh, Michał fell ill, but I believe he is here with us online so if you if you see us if you are with us so mm, uh, hello so let's be let's let's get down to work and the first question as i said i think i would like to address to helga the question for a general outline of general story about the icon uh, uh, network uh, the philosophy, assumptions, just for us to get the gist of it, the gist of, of the idea, the gist of the model, and how it, how it works. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for inviting me. And I would very much have liked to be there in person. And I look forward to hopefully be able to come to Lublin very soon. And I also just want, before I start answering, I also just want to congratulate Lesia with um, the Nobel Peace Prize, not for, uh, unfortunately for you, Lesia, but for your your countryman, Alex Bilecki, is imprisoned in Belarus. It's a, I think it's a very wise and good decision for the Nobel Committee to award the, the Nobel Peace Prize to him and together with two other organizations. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm um, ICON, the International Cities of Refuge Network. ICON was established in 2006 so we have been around for for soon um, well like 15 years um, <clears throat> the whole idea is uh, uh, behind the the network and behind the organization is that we believe that the cities can do more than the nation states can do many times <clears throat> there is a need for action for solidarity for <clears throat> to 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 help persecuted writers and artists and <clears throat> it is not and, and especially as we see the world today it's not enough that many states and nations are 
welcoming or are opening up the borders. Uh, we, we have seen uh, in many occasions know that it is extremely important that the cities, the cities within the nations are opening up and, and taking uh, actively part in this important work. Very concrete, uh, what ICON does, um, when, <clears throat> when a city becomes a member of ICON, I can mention here the city of Krakow, who was the first um, city in Poland, came in in, in, um, in, in 2011 and, and works, we'll come back to that, I'm sure, but, uh, but um, it, it, it is a <clears throat> works very, very well and strongly as a member of a network. The, the concrete thing that is, um, an ICON city has to do is to invite one, uh, persecute the writers, either single or a couple or with family. Uh, invite a <clears throat> persecuted writer that cannot be um, work and, and, and stay and think safely in his or her home country or the region where she is. She is. So uh, the, the, uh, we are now approximately 80 cities in Europe and also starting in the US and in Latin America, hopefully soon all over the world, where, where the cities are inviting <clears throat> persecuted writers or artists that have applied to ICON for protection. And uh, the whole ICON movement consists of cities stepping up and, and taking part in this very important work. For the cities, it's, it is both um, a, a very concrete and a very um, symbolic action when you take into when the city becomes an icon member and and gets committed to to icon i many times i when i'm kind of trying to explain what icon is i'm i'm using uh, i mean many times i'm mentioning the fantastic work that is done by for instance by krakow but i also many times uh, cite uh, the mayor of, um, of Paris, uh, ICON celebrated its, its General Assembly in Paris in 2016, and I'm just citing now what the mayor of Paris, Anne Hidalgo, said when we met there in 2016. Throughout the 20th century, the city of Paris has been host to exiles from around the world for intellectuals and artists. The values of human rights and freedom of expression is at the core of the international, international strategy of our city, she says. And then she says, uh, the mayor says, being a part of ICON, hosting writers, journalists and artists at risk is both a very concrete and an important symbolic fulfillment of our commitment. So this is the mayor of Paris. I'm sure the mayor of Krakow can say the same. And hopefully, I hope, and uh, maybe not as a concrete outcome of this discussion, but we are really hoping also that the city of Lublin will count as one of the ICON members soon. So I'm sure that that, that I mean that this um, what what uh, Mayor Anidalgo of Paris says there also can be a, a statement that can be supported 100% also by the mayor and, and by, the, by the city of Lublin, if and when Lublin decides to, to join ICON, which I'm looking and hoping very much, looking very much forward to and hoping very much uh, will, will, will happen. Um, so, and I think just to, to, to finish for, the, for this first question, I think uh, it's quite obvious, but it, it's when we see the world as it is today, it is, there had never been a larger need for cities to step up and join in actions like this. Um, there are more and more um, persecuted writers and artists applying to ICON, and we, we are definitely depend on more cities to join. I was um, very glad a couple of weeks ago to go to Bratislava and signed with the mayor there. In next week or in, in 20th October, we will go to, to the city of Strasbourg, it's also a capital of Europe, and they will sign in as a member of ICON. So that will probably also be a city that can underline very strongly that, yes, it is a concrete action, but it's also, also symbolically important for a city to be part of a network like this. 
So this was my first um, answer to your question. I look forward to come back and explain more later on in the discussion. Thank you so much, Helga. Thank you. This is this is, I think, exactly what what we needed for the for start. Przepraszam, po polsku powinienem mówić. Przestawiam się naturalnie, jak słyszę język. So it's a uh... That's a, that's definitely a good point. When we uh, when we this is a very good opening for us. All of us in Lublin, we truly hope to join Icon as soon as possible, and that Lublin will become a shelter city for artists and activists. Maybe that's the moment f to ask about experiences of a town or city that has something to say right now. A Polish town, a Polish city that has huge experience and maybe I'll ask Professor Dominika Kasprowicz to share your experience with uh, Villa, De, Villa Decius as your participation in uh, in uh, Icon Network. Well, thank you all. Thank you for um, having me on this panel and for uh, your all effort around this Congress, and thank you for having uh, this meeting on your agenda, because it's a great chance for all of us to tell what is uh, at the very core of uh, solidarity at the city level, at the urban level, that ICOR is also about. Uh, Helga has just explained uh, briefly and, and very nicely about what ICON is, and I believe Robert will also have something to add. I think this initiative, about 11 years old, uh, at least in Krakow, Krakow was Poland's first city to join the network, and ever since writers, poets, translators who cannot work in their states of origin, they can come to Villa Deciusz and have safe shelter to work. Uh, I'd like to show my screen, so let me know if you can see it. I think yes, I think it's fine. So. Krakow was the first, but now we have more cities joining the program. It's not only about beautiful words, it's not only about papers delivered at Euro European uh, Congresses, it's people in the first place. Brave, beautiful, talented authors who come to Krakow, UNESCO literature city, by the way, they come here to their safe haven and work. So, so far we have received representatives of all continents, people from all over the world. One of our last guests was uh, uh, Hul Sharath, uh, an activist from, and writer from Syria. Now we have uh, a guest from Angola. Um, LGBTQ community activist and poet Ayun Nin, and uh, we have published uh, one volume of her poetry in Krakow. Now we also have a Belarusian uh, opposition activists, translators, uh, writers, for example, Vladimir Niklaev, Andrei Kadanovich. And I wish, wish to congratulate to uh, Lesia, uh, who is there in Lublin with you. And I want to assure her that we do remember about you and support your, your work so that it's not only 1,300 political prisoners in Belarus, but also all Belarusians who want to be free. We wish for you to make this dream come true. So as the director of this institution operating the program, I believe that we can achieve this step by step by supporting exceptional people who 
are respected by their own people, charismatic people with beautiful background and ready to share while in exile, ready to continue their mission to convey this message through free, unconstrained possibility to uh, develop their talent. Uh, I believe this is worth every while and every money. This is a, a publication series from uh, our organization, just a slice of uh, our work published here at Villa Deniciusza and participation in this network also opens up not only institutions but also cities for new possibilities. Translators, writers are not the only people who are looking for shelter. We also have researchers who are also supported by the municipality of Krakow and who, for example, are given an opportunity to work at uh, Jakielonia University. Just a couple of uh, pictures from uh, recent months from uh, the interior of uh, Decius Villa. Participation in ICON, I believe, is a great opportunity also to integrate people through culture. And an example of this kind of initiative is the Polish Sergio Radomello Award and also activities involving uh, newcomers, uh, including, of course, Ukrainian refugees, uh, artistic picnics, uh, multicultural festival, new Krakowers, and this international project that wouldn't have started if not for the inspiration and know-how that Krakow gained thanks to ICON, thanks to the network. This is so close program thanks to modern technologies. We have been able to collect testimonies, collect personal stories and help integrate people who are forced to migrate. Now, I'll stop at this point. I hope this short uh, uh, speech uh, uh, will be in a moment supplemented by Mr. Piaskowski, uh, representative of the Mayor of Krakow for Culture. So, Robert, uh, Robert Piaskowski, over to you. Uh, I'd like to hear your perspective, that which is also close to me because I um, I also uh, do a similar job here in Lublin. So tell me about your view. How do you respond to this uh, challenge? Why being part of this network is, is so relevant? Well, hello, everyone. Best uh, regards to Lublin and, and of course, Norway. Uh, wherever you are, I'd like to tell you when the idea of ICON came to Krakow, because it was not an accident. I remember Helga Lundes' uh, meeting with Alison Bowden and mayor of uh, Krakow. Um, Alison from, from the city of literature, Edinburgh. This is when Krakow this made, made two landmark decisions that they wanted to be named UNESCO City of Literature and we wanted to ask Edinburgh to mentor this uh, way, to be a partner in this way, in this process. At the same time, we decided to go for what, what, what had always been uh, so important for Krakow, and which is part of our national emblem. I mean, to keep our gates open as a city which is hospitable, which is open to otherness, which is open to newcomers, because the heritage of the city was built on openness, 
This can be seen in local architecture and cuisine and literature, but also in the most painful moments of our history, because Krakow was also very much hurt, if I may put it like this, during the Second World War. And memory of those who are gone and of those who co-created this city is at the foundation of our thinking about our local heritage, about the program of literature, which is a really powerful vision here locally, and the heritage of Detsius uh, Villa, uh, which since the Renaissance has been a shelter for those who uh, were original people, who had original and bold philosophies and thinking. And this city cannot grow without openness, without contacts with uh, the outer world. It cannot be reliable as a city of culture without opening it. And the idea of Salman Rushdie, who all his life has been running away, looking for shelter, and he described it in his book, quasi-biography, quasi-novel, Joseph Anton, where we can see two big figures, literary figures, Joseph Conrad and Anton Chekhov. He described a certain uh, incapacity of big states that are kind of actors in a big play. And, well, the UK government uh, didn't offer him officially his protection, uh, their protection. It was the city of London that did it. And our colleague our colleague who talked to Salman Rushdie uh, the other day, uh, and we were very shocked at this uh, stabbing attack uh, or attempt at uh, Rushdie's life, a, a great ins inspirator of our network, someone who inspired us to create it, but at the same time becoming a victim before our very eyes, although we seem to be, and he seems to be, in a relatively safe uh, location around friends. So it shows no artist, no author is safe. They can be, at a time, held, held to account for what they write. They. Um, can fall victim to fatwa, to assassination, to a terrorist act, to slander, to lack of understanding. And we, uh, as cities, we do believe that it is our duty to offer asylum, shelter to people of different outlooks, different languages, and do it at all cost. When we joined, uh, icon in uh, 2011, after a relatively difficult process, uh, and other cities in Poland actually learned from this, where there is a number of decisions to be made, um, the City Council, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we tried to explain uh, that the people that whom we are we're going to receive they didn't need to be refugees. It was more about help, uh, grants, and making these people part of the local cultural bloodstream. And in uh, 2018, we celebrated a hundredth, an hundredth anniversary of uh, birth of Czesław Miłosz, a Polish Nobel Prize winner in literature. He also struggled with censorship. His uh, works were banned in Poland for some time. And he also came back to Krakow. He's buried here in the old cemetery of uh, Krakow, among other outstanding figures, um, uh, a representative of Polish culture. And I remember uh, when we joined the network, the city council of uh, Krakow uh, unanimously agreed to Krakow's membership in the network. 
And we hoped that more cities from the region will also join, join this uh, great and noble association of cities who are ready to open their arms to newcomers. And that's why later on, Wrocław, Gdańsk, Katowice followed up. And I'm now really touched and grateful to Lublin. I want to congratulate to Mr. Mayor, to all of you, for getting interested in this initiative, for uh, expressing your will to be also part of this network. At this moment, we try to redefine what hospitality is in the new conditions. And we talked to Professor Kasprovich the other day that um, there was a beautiful response of, of Polish society to uh, the needs of Belarusian dissidents. And now in, in Krakow we also have, uh, I would say, a cultural elite uh, from uh, Belarus. And not only, we had Slitana Cichonowska in Krakow a few days ago. So we are pretty active. Um, but now, how come that we responded to the Ukrainian crisis so wonderfully by opening up our homes? And I believe this was partly because of the lessons learned in the past. Like activities like Detsius Villa, 150 names from Belarus and Ukraine that were here to work, to make friends, to establish contact. So this hospitality thing is not only a PR trick. It's not only marketing. Uh, this is part of the city's bloodstream, part of the program of um, a city of literature. And now we have 10 programs around it. Uh, that's usually Villa is just one, but it scholars at Trisk, a sister project. Uh, we had ICON back in 2013. We had a General Assembly and and the Writing Freedom Conference. I, I will always remember that speech uh, by uh, Władysław Bartoszewski about uh, Jewish uh, resistance during the uh, Second World War and those who uh, helped uh, Jewish, uh, Jewish uh, members of the community, of the community, uh, well, Jewish Poles, uh, I can say, during the Second World War. So, to close it, I think this whole thing um, creates a wonderful story. Icon didn't just came out of the blue. It was there somewhere in the bloodstream of our city for ages. It is a natural manifestation of our openness, of openness of the city and its people that has been around for ages. And this project, in my personal view, is in a way a repayment of debt of us, free cities of Poland, repaying the debt to other cities in the world uh, for hosting our Polish literary figures, experts, researchers who are not able to uh, do creative work here in Poland. And I'm not only talking about the 20th century. Uh, when we were accepting membership in ICON, we quoted Czesław Miłosz, uh, which was very much like what Rajdi said. Um, Naklaev, Cichanowska, uh, Marie Amelie, many, many people who, who used to come to Krakow, who were here, were hosted here, uh, who found shelter here for a moment. Mm, they were able to work, but also rebuild uh, their career, sometimes go further to other countries, sometimes return home. So it was, they were also a great contribution to our literary community, cultural community. 
And I remember all great talks with the mayor of Krakow about uh, values, about the philosophy of um, what we are. And both Decius Villa and the team of uh, Krakow City of Literature, Danuta Glondes, who also uh, was a very great advocate of this um, program back in 2009, and the whole process that uh, Professor Kasprovich also guided, it makes a wonderful story. And Darek, when you were Helga and Dominika, when you were congratulating to the, the Belarusian uh, Nobel Pro uh, Peace Prize winner. I remember the Spring Association was also awarded Sergio de Mello Award. So you have all these little streams come together in this great river, this great story of us being responsible uh, at the local and global scale. And I'm so happy that at this cross-border Congress, we are talking right just about um, these matters. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. Many thanks for this, uh, for all those information, uh, for all those bits of information, and basically, about, uh, and particularly for showing different richness of uh, contrast, of context, from different layers, uh, consultations in ethical and philosophical understanding of why we do this and uh, answering those key questions why cities uh, should have structures should have uh, values of that kind uh, values uh, coming from participating in in icon and, and similar initiatives I do admit that I have a kind of train of thought right now when when I keep thinking about what it really means this kind of movement this kind of uh, this kind of understanding of city as a shelter uh, as as we started our meeting today and perhaps this is our our common denominator for the for the panel and this first aspect is of course there are many of them so maybe it's difficult which is the most important but the first that I would like to highlight uh, in my perspective, a key voice that I would like to, to have, and I did mention that, uh, of a pleasure of having an artist next to me, uh, uh, Lesha uh, Shoka. So let's have a look uh, on what has been said about uh, all that has been said about Icon, about cities, about, about Krakow, and you now as an artist who could benefit from Icon's activity. Uh, who, first of all, you were able to change your, physically change your situation radically. Then you were a beneficiary uh, when cooperating with Gdansk within the, um, within Icon. Now, tell me, what's your perspective? What's your outlook? What was the experience for you? Uh, what did you get uh, from the network? First of all, I'm absolutely proud to have been chosen as an artist to be a part of the network. Gdańsk is a wonderful place for adaptation. This was crucial for me, that the city policy is so open, is so uh, that, that the solidarity movement is not a matter of a past, it's a matter of today. I think the most vital point for me is that ICON program is a long-term program. It offers a long-term perspective. So in a year, uh, you know, when when uh, you, you had time, my perspective was this. I'm coming to Gdansk. I'm thinking about settling down, you know, somehow get back to me uh, throughout my experiences. And then to make some very very basic things you never talk about it but you know it's it's what life is about i mean documents legalizations procedures are uh, becoming someone in a new place that takes long mentally physically and this first year i must say is with this long lengthy introduction it's it's like an open window 
you know, to see the world again and to start my journey to my life again. That was crucial. That was huge. Uh, I, I, I'm really, really grateful for giving me new life, and I'm so happy to have been chosen for the program. Thank you. But at the same time, if you all, if you all agree, uh, maybe you would stay in in my talk with with Lesha. Uh, again, I did mention I will keep mentioning this perspective of bottom up thinking about the the understanding about the values in Icon. Uh, so when I was preparing for our meeting, I thought. Okay, we have an artist, uh, an artist who works through expressive channel. It's a voice. It's a, it's a creation. So a form of communication of what I have in me, and, and I'm, I send a message outside. So what comes to mind is perhaps the other function of of icon. But somehow it's it's guarantees to provide to the artist participant artists so organizing opportunities for expression some conditions for uh, expression and what comes to mind is this strong ethical context whatever happens in my life uh, quite regularly maybe when I when I work on different ideas, topics dealing with intercultural relations, multicultural aspects like a position of minorities, migrants uh, finding themselves in an absolutely alien cultural context. It always comes to mind, in to me, in a way, there's this, this uh, um, reflection on building a philosophy in the modern world basically by uh, uh, Apple's Karl Otto Apple's uh, philosophy of building responsibility this philosophical uh, school uh, Frankfurt philosophical school you know working out solutions that will prevent the uh, the uh, German uh, influence on the history of Europe in the early, in, in the mid 20th century, to avoid totalitarian solutions, uh, authoritarian solutions, where the voice of an artist, where the vo voice of an activist is thwarted, is blocked. So I, um, I just think that I can may provide an, a factor, a mechanism, however it sounds, you know, that's maybe an idea to change these conditions, to change the condition of a person who is voiceless, is um, speechless, who is forced to keep silent, who is oppressed in a country where they live. And it's an opening situation now where ICON is to give not only a, a shelter umbrella, which is first step, but then to give opportunities for free expression, for regaining the voice. Hello. And this, uh, this uh, ethics of responsibility by uh, Apple, he says, we who are in a stronger position, in a position of a stronger person, happy citizens in wealthy countries, like for instance, Poland today, we are obliged, ethically obliged, to empower, to amplify the voice of those whose voice is in crisis. Migrants, minorities, people in a way, in a kind of suppression or a difficult situation whose voice is weaker. And Lesha, if you allow me, I would like to ask about this, about how much your stay and your work, your life in Gdansk, and your co -op, your participation in ICON helped you to build uh, your uh, artistic expression. Um, Let me start that, in my opinion, uh, art always looks for an outlet, for way out, for some kind of realization channel. Art yeah. is always aside or uh, para goes parallel to politics. The voice of an artist 
є струпорами в своїй спільноті. The void of an artist must also spread, must also permeate the community. Uh, it's uh, it's to visualize forms and problems of society. In a way, it adapts. Those. І робим такий творжен альтернативний. Create in a way alternative story, alternative narrative about the history of, for instance, authorit uh, uh, authoritarian states, about the manipulated history of these states, local and 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 and, and national. There's always the problem of avoiding um, avoiding uh, the, the problem that was usually oriented towards the past, um, towards um, uh, and and then the artist comes and they yes they they do take archives they do realize that they work on memories but they do it in a different way. When, when talking about my life in, in Gdańsk and my exhibition that was held there, that was a very difficult moment for me. It was a, a, a month after, after my leaving uh, Belarus and, uh, and the conflict in, in Belarus, the uprising in Belarus. And you know, my reflecting upon that was really, really uh, difficult for me. It's rather difficult to talk about traumas, political, national, uh, of total repression, where you know everyone what what is what is going on or what was going on in Belarus, or what is actually going on in Belarus. This was a difficult moment for me to stop and and be an artist. But through this exhibition, through such short time. Mm, even meetings like this one, like, like like inviting me here, they let me rem they they remind me about people who still are fighting against the regime, who reject, who uh, mm, uh, resist. Professor uh, Professor uh, Kasparovich mentioned the uh, activists in Bela uh, uh, Belarusian uh, dissidents. Belarusians are not dissidents. Uh, after 2020, everybody saw that a lot of people are, um, uh, in fact, the, now it's it's the regime who is the dissident, because the majority of the citizens want to live in a free state. Modern Belarusian art is against the regime, and there's no debate upon that. Thanks for this. Thank you for, for that. Naturally, that would be to try to ask and reflect uh, to try for reflection or other people, I feel a little bit uncomfortable of a, almost like a, too much of a moderator of this talk. I need to maybe, uh, I would be happy for it to take a cascade and a general flow that goes out, outside of me. I don't want to be, you know, this director of that. So maybe let me uh, ask you for, for voices. Um, and for me, when uh, I'm to participate in sense making of this uh, initiative here in Lublin, this perspective connected with the experience of expression, is it something that we learned as hosts, uh, Lublin as a future host, but you as, as hosts of the ICON uh, activities? What is it that you learned from those persons who came to cities and who expressed themselves artistically. That's a very tempting to use these different perspectives. You know, we are so close to certain things that we can't see. And we need someone coming from a distance to learn from them because their outlook is is vital. You know, it's 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 the first question I asked Lesha yesterday when we just walked today. You know, tell me what you can see and what I can't see because you need a a natural perspective to, to use. Artists can see more, deeper, they look deeper, they see further in time, they have the sensation of the future, uh, intuition of the future. What's the situation of, in this kind in, uh, of this kind in Krakow? Czyli tak, jak, jak to jest w Krakowie, więc rozumiem, że Kraków powinien <laughs> zacząć. Uh, let me maybe begin. I, uh... You can write books here in what happened or what is happening in Krakow about the beauty of the process. 
komunikowanie się z potencjalnym of the communication of the potential of the future residents of candidates for residency in our program who decide to who make a decision to come to Krakow. Yeah. That's a process that perhaps Helge uh, could 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 describe in uh, in its wonderful dynamics and maybe it's not a catalog of names to pick but you really have to get prepared that sometimes you really need to uh, to accept a writer with huge uh, huge traumas huge huge um, wounds and even illnesses or disorders which you know you will have to somehow get to get some get on a straight line tortures persecutions losing family losing roots this is something that you need to understand, comprehend. And not someone that will go to a press briefing and will lovely present the perspective, expectations of a city's look. Now we will show off. Now how we are nice uh, hosting you. Um, sometimes it's that we have those residents for a number of months and still we are silent about it. This delicacy, this uh, this uh, f this uh, China-like situation, delicate porcelain situation, and we really have to be therapeutical, therapeutical sometimes about it. When we joined the program, media often kept saying, all right, so we'll have uh, Svetlana Alexievich uh, who actually is a uh, 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 stipend uh, 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 grantees of a of icon, or maybe she will have some potential future uh, uh, Booker uh, Prize winners or uh, Nobel, uh, Nobel uh, maybe someone some uh, Salman Rushdie will visit us. So sometimes it's like you know it's a shortcut uh, way of thinking, simplifying way of thinking that its icon is um, maybe a marketing tool to build a portfolio of wonderful list of creators that will make part of a history of a city and we will wait uh, uh, patiently for them to become great artists. That's a temptation. We need to cut it off. We need to get out of the heads of uh, citizens, uh, city, uh, city uh, 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 authorities and, and uh, anybody else. We need to work as service people uh, about learning. Well, we learned everything, humility, uh, sensitivity, um, situation of Ossetia, situation of Conga, situation of uh, uh, in city that the countries like Norway, um, uh, like Maria Mali, who lived there, found family and shelter. So her case was, for instance, for a, was a case for change in uh, immigration law. Uh, we learned about the situation of publishers in Iran. How to. Uh, how to make links between uh, uh, between artists and p and publishers or the so-called art market, and still allow artists to stay to be themselves, in their identity to keep their identity. How to help are you need to work in different areas, different uh, areas of sensitivity, sensitivity of needs like LG LGBT needs in, for instance, in Poland, how to keep sensitivity in that areas, how not to use, for instance, her openness in that respect to help us become more open in, uh, in, in still discriminating discourses in this respect in our society, in our country. Flowing down from the uh, from the central uh, central uh, uh, government or central political elites, uh, so we learn not to use these people for our political uh, interests. Uh, how to make them part of our uh, cultural fabric of our city? So, in a way, I'm absolutely grateful to uh, the, to Villa Decius, to translators and to organizers of all festivals, literary festivals, and other cities in 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 Icon in Poland that also welcome, that also invite, that also send invitations to present day and past day residents. That's. Uh, true 
network of solidarity, and this is what is our obligation and our lesson that we learn every day. Obviously, then we have also cultural differences, sometimes very difficult to handle, to live with, to function with, how to, uh, how to, um, how to prevent certain difficult uh, meeting point encounters in social language levels. So it's all a never-ending class, a never-ending uh, learning, a never-ending score, and it's rather, and it's obviously impossible without a good leader, about a good house institution, where empathy is part of it, is ingrained in the program. We are happy to have such institution, institution w whose know-how was growing stage by stage, year by year, and that whose functioning is built on dialogue, where learning one another is perhaps more important than project implementation understood its classic way. So that's our perspective of our city, and, and obviously the daily the daily perspective is perhaps I would like to ask uh, Miss uh, uh, Professor Dominika Kasprovich to talk about more practical issues. Professor I actually join in this uh, smiling at Professor uh, Kasprovich and showing the mm, down-to-earth perspective of the organizer of the event. I also smile to you, but particularly to our current and previous guests. And as I said, there were more than 10 of them. And they taught us a lot about ourselves in a very short time. It was more and, and faster than we would have been able to learn about ourselves before. And when the program started 11 years ago, the question of uh, migration policy migratory movements and openness to persons who experience forced migration. When support networks and procedures were only in theory, although indeed in Krakow, primarily among NGOs, we used to have organizations with some experience in um, uh, migration, uh, migration management, but mainly collected abroad, uh, Poland still remained an island uh, in, against the background of Europe, a very homogenous uh, country. So that bold decision from the Krakow municipality 10 years ago was the first crack in a sense, in this uh, system where we started to collect know-how. So now we have really gained a lot of experience and are ready to share with other cities, not only in Poland. But this experience from February this year was a great lesson for everyone. And the huge influx of uh, Ukrainian nationals um, coming to Krakow through Lublin, uh, through Zeszów. Uh, well, we weren't that surprised because, and, and we're partly prepared because for many years before we had been able to develop uh, certain programs like Open Krakow. We had certain procedures in place. We had certain organizations ready to start working right away in February and the following months. And of, of course, ICON or scholars at risk, this is perhaps a drop that uh, was added to this bigger vessel of aid. But I think we were able to do that because of the many years of building the image of Krakow as an open city. And now Krakow can see itself through the eyes of others. And I believe uh, Krakow has already become uh, a, a component of this, uh, of this story, of this migratory situation. And speaking about everyday work, uh, 
there are some similarities that come to my mind. Maybe it's no surprise. Uh, uh, we don't need a village only. We need an entire city so that people with the experience of forced migration, people who are talented, who are sensitive, they should be taken care of and should be offered conditions to start working again. It doesn't happen overnight. I see eye to eye with Robert. Every figure, every case is different. There's a different story behind them. But I don't want to repeat what you have already said. Just a few cases, few examples that I'd like to share. In a way, a representative of what we are doing uh, in response, Robert, to your question, what we learn when we look at ourselves through the eyes of our guests that we host in Icon. Had Sharad uh, from Syria, the poet from Syria, I, I showed you before in a picture. During her stay in Krakow, she met many people. We published two volumes of her poetry and prose. She was an awarded artist, and in one poem she wrote about Krakow, and she said, Krakow is a woman, is a woman who sets her hair, her braid, who is caring, who is uh, maybe changeable, but beautiful. We don't think about Krakow in this way, you know, as a feminine creature, but that was really a, 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 an eureka moment for us uh, and enabled us to have a different view of our city. Well, more than 90% of Ukrainian nationals who came here after the war are women. Uh, three generational families, uh, grandmothers, mothers and children who um, came here and some stayed here to co-create this city together with us. And another story, another example, this is uh, Belarusian writers who are still here, many of them are still here in Krakow. I understand Lesia, I understand her point of view that uh, who is in exile or, or, or who is not, uh, that not everybody is a Belarusian, uh, uh, really. And these artists, despite many personal problems, they also get involved. They help us establish certain contacts also to be able to hold such events as, as Culture in Exile that we held in June. So they also helped us uh, organize a number of events to show the people of Krakow what is important, to show uh, that we can provide a new quality in dialogue. What uh, still remains a new experience for uh, the people of Krakow, for Poles, is encounter with representatives of other religions and of other races. So the presence and certain, you know, courage of being here, like Professor Caputo from Congo or Ayunil, this is for us uh, a bitter pill, so to say, and a bitter lesson about ourselves, about what we are like, and that still there is much to be done where, um, before we can say that we approach equally um, uh, people who um, deserve, who need support. So these are the cases I wanted to share. I have more, of course, but, well, we have no time. At this point, I'd like to thank my team from uh, Decius Villa, uh, many, many people who are very supportive, who help us host uh, foreign 
academics, foreign writers and artists in Krakow. Zmuszonych, a ludziach zmuszonych k migracji, a w całym migracja jest e, takim jakby e, pozytywnym, że ona e, jest naturalna w całym. E, I kiedy chodzi o tym, jak musimy traktować ludzi, wydaje mi się, można też e, nie myśleć o nich cały czas, jak o ludziach, które uh, potrzebują. Excuse me, uh, technical problems. Well, uh, of course, we should think about them, that they are a, a, a resource, that they understand the situation, they can adopt a different view of the, our situation, and these guests, they can be supportive, they can contribute to the city, and, and of course, with that, they also feel needed, which is very relevant. And my experience is that in February, when the war started, I wasn't, I wasn't um, in Gdańsk in my uh, studio, but at the border crossing in Przemysl. I spent a month there helping people uh, because I had received support, so I then wanted to return this favor to do something for for them at the border crossing. Uh, well, thank you, Lesia, Dominika. Thank you, Robert, very much for your voices. From my viewpoint, you provided a very specific picture and this dividing line between a crisis and the need to be taken care of, the need for, as you put it, a therapy in a sense, and sometimes even if you can tell your experience, this is also therapeutic. So. In a way, one condition can transfer into another more positive condition when you spit it out. But it must be done on the conditions set by the person, by the guest who we are hosting. So I want to thank you for pointing it out. Helge. And going back to Helga, uh, I'd like to hear um, about this from a person responsible for, say, philosophy of how icon works. So, go ahead. We'd like to hear from you. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Moderator. I think this has been very interesting, very productive for me to listen to you, both uh, when you started out, Mr. Moderator, and, I mean, about um, this idea uh, uh, how the city are learning to see herself, like Dominika, uh, uh, in the feminine, uh, from outside, by the outsiders helping us to see our cities in other ways than we can um, do when we are when we are living there. That's very, I think, very important, and and and, and that it was very uh, good, deepened both from from um, Ulesia and from from Robert and and, and Dominika and. I can just say, say very kind of uh, uh, principle or bureaucratic or, or whatever, a little bit about, I think, how ICON stands out also from other networks, similar networks, is that uh, by, by principle, when, I mean, anyone, any persecuted writer or artist can apply to ICON. And, and what we see as very important is that they don't need to have anything in their rucksack, in in their with them, and they don't need to be sponsored. They don't need to have any 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 strong supporters or anyone. They can apply to Icon only because they need protection and because their freedom of expression is under threat. So I think that's a very important point, and also it's an important point for Icon, and that's also of course what um, is 
so fantastic provided by all the cities in the network where when the writer of the artist is uh, received in the city and this is also i mean i also appreciate what you said robert about that very many times or many times there are uh, the writers may still be in a threat they they might be traumatized and so on so they they, they need a very good attention from the professional people in the city so that they can uh, be protected in a good way and not always at the first point be speaking to the press and so on. But but what, what is uh, also a very important principle with ICON is that there is no expectation uh, or no pressure on the artist or the writer that they shall create something specific uh, when they are staying in an ICON refuge. I think that's a very important uh, principle. Uh, I think Lesha is, is a fantastic, uh, you are a fantastic example that you are providing, you are, you are delivering so much to the city, but you do it from your own will. You don't do it because there is something, a pressure, there's an expectation from the city or from ICOM that you shall do it, but you do it from your own will. I think, and I think that is, is of course, since we are a, a, an organization, a network that promotes freedom of expression, at the most we, we, <coughs> we really need to underline that expression is free i mean it, it and and all the the i think approximately you no know, 300 writers and artists have been supported uh, and invited uh, by icon city since we started in 2006 i think all of them are, are for all of them it's 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 very very important uh, that when they have been invited to an icon city there is no pressure no no uh, expectation for for any any particular service from their side but I, I think that's also the condition from all the fantastic things that they have uh, have provided while staying in refuge uh, you robert mentioned also svetlana alexievich she was an icon guest in in the city of gothenburg in 2006 to 2008 long time ago she was not very well famous at that time, not very well known in the city, but the city provided very good condition for her, very good translators, and so that she can work. And I mean, 10 years after she gets the Nobel Prize in Literature, not of course only because she was in, in Gothenburg in an icon refuge, but it, it says something also, and that's an important point, I think, about long term. Uh, you, Lesia, mentioned um, that the icon is a long term network. We try one year and, and who also now provides two-year stay for the resident. I think that is very much important. And also, uh, we, we cannot always expect the fruits of the work immediately. So, when um, if and when Lublin joins Icon now, you receive your first Icon guest, work very well with her or him, and and uh, then maybe also invite another guest. That, but. The fruits of all the work that has been done from the moment they have you have started to work with ICON might come immediately, but it might also come after five years, after ten years, after fifteen years. I think we, we have to, to look at this as a as a real long term investment, a, a real long term project. And 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 only mentioning now in in final in, in, in this uh, answer, I mean the 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 effect of all or of the collectivity of, of the community between all the cities, all that we feel so strong when we meet, for instance, when we met for the General Assembly in Gdansk in, um, in June this year, and we will meet all of us in Brussels in March next year and so on. The community we feel, uh, and between the cities that are committed to the same ideas, to the same values, it's very, very strong. It can be difficult or challenging to put it in words or to, but but I'm I'm sure that the impact is in in the end will be very very big. So thank you so far. Thank you so much, Helge. Uh, 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 Myślę, że teraz jest dobry moment, może żeby zapytać państwa. Uh, thank you. I think it's a good question, a good moment to ask people who are here in our room, here in Lublin, if you have questions, comments, anything that you'd like to share with us, uh, feel invited to uh, take the mic and, and talk. 
Лесю, дорога, я дозволю собі звернутися до тебе на «ти», хоч ми ще не перейшли на «ти». I would like to address you by you directly. I hope you, you, you won't have, uh, have against, uh, you have nothing against. As a, co- as a co-organizer of the Congress, I have this feeling that we need to say I'm sorry. I mean, we, we have to, uh, when, you, when you accept it, when you uh, when you uh, when you accepted our invitation one of the early uh, uh, invitations you asked for you asked for you to be able to speak in your in your uh, mother tongue i i on, i do it on purpose i mean i you speak ukraine because the polish the polish speaking person does not know that our languages are relatively close uh, within one family uh, uh, language family and our languages have something like 83% of common lexis, common uh, lexical uh, items, stock. Our languages are very close to one another among Slavic languages. And I had this feeling, I've had this feeling when I started meeting with uh, speakers of Belarusian. Але в мене завжди було таке відчуття. Maybe a risky, uh, risky statement, risky claim, but I think that speakers of Ukraine, uh, Ukrainian and the Belarusian uh, language are also uh, expresses. I mean, they they have similar set of values. I'm sorry. For me, that was. Uh, I'm sorry once again. Uh, that was that was for me obvious that you can speak uh, uh, Belarusian. I hope that uh, interpreters. Uh, okay, so let, let's make an experiment that uh, I will ask you a question in Ukraine, Ukrainian, but you will answer this question in, uh, in Belarusian. Okay, you, you, you asked us to give us an uh, possibility to, to switch in debate in, in Belarusian. So maybe let's try to experiment a little and we'll try to show that technically that's real. I'm not sure if you know that if people here is know that this is the first Congress uh, with the third language, third uh, third Congress language is uh, is uh, Ukrainian. Uh, before that, it was Russian. So we needed to wait for the war. Uh, yeah. Okay. It turns out that ooh, the war. It happened to be a turning point in, in, in a number of aspects, and there's this change. Now, the, the Congress of my dreams is that the fourth language, uh, one day that fourth language will be Belarusian. And I really hope for this thing to come true. We waited for Ukrainian as a Congress language for long, and I hope that Belarusian will be an absolutely official language. That is going to be a trans-border cooperation. We are the closest neighbors. You know, Lublin is perhaps the only city in Poland whose uh, website uh, is run, has been run, even 10 years ago. They started running in Belarusian language, and it wasn't that obvious that time ago. But for me, that was obvious, maybe for you, maybe for us. The Congress of my dream is Belarusian Congress. And a question I would like to, to, to pose to you, to ask you, it's an open way and in a warm way. You, you did talk about your Gdansk-based experience of your new life in Gdansk. Can you tell me, can you tell us what would be the dream city of your shelter? Uh, what would be the dream sh- shelter cities? I know Gdansk. I love Gdansk, and Gdansk is it, it was was one, did did its best uh, to to be a host. But from the perspective of Lublin, who aspires to be part of the uh, icon. Uh, could you tell us? Uh, could you tell us? I mean, what could be, what could be, what could be um, kind of direction of thinking? What, what those these ideas, uh, cri- criteria that the shelter city should have? 
What would be your、uh, bits of advice? And I sh- hope for a very, very、uh, precise bit of advice on your side. No, you, know, you know, not just a general ideas, a philosophical, ethical ideas of a high level of abstractness. Precisely, step by step, maybe what the city should do for an artist who wants steps. Each hour step should be directed. Congress. Towards、uh, maybe not making a congress in Belarusian language, but maybe to hold another congress in、uh, Minsk or maybe in Kiev. So language is a vital part of our past, of our of our memory, of our remembrance, and of our everyday life. Belarusians and Ukrainians these days, we have we are in difficult relations. They are complicated, and obviously they are thorny, partly also because of the war. Some things surfaced,、uh, and we have to work on this together. Before that, there wasn't much context for work together.、Uh, Now we are able.、Uh, the same story was about Belarusians and Poles.、Um, perhaps we were a little bit more advanced in Polish-Belarusian、uh, cooperation.、Uh, if you compare it with Belarusian-Ukrainian, still we need to work out our traumatic experience of authoritarian regime or regimes. A politicness, which was so long in my country. Maybe a kind of a. Political or non-political, bipartisan approach、uh, and, and discussion,、um, something that will either reverse or somehow thwart what happened in Belarus. So it reaches beyond city space. So it's it's so nice that you speak to me in in Ukrainian and I can answer you in Belarusian. I'm so happy, and I hope this is just the first step of our cooperation、uh, for us to. To talk and to understand one another. Thank you very much for your question, as well as your answer. Thank you very much for、uh, for, 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 for these voices. And in an open way, I would like to ask both the panelists and、uh, anyone in the room here, in the lounge here. For just the last uh, 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 talk, the last voices, the last questions, comments,、uh, is just the last minute、uh, before we b- before we、uh, round up our meeting. So, anyone feeling free to take part in our discussion? Now it's the time. In a nutshell, I would like to make a declaration, strong declaration, full declaration of city of Krakow, the decision process, decision-making process, or in sharing of practical experience in Krakow in organizing the program of ICON, and the local government level and everyday life functioning of the program.、Uh, We would like to grant it to our colleagues in Lublin to feel the warmth of a handshake. You need five, you need five fingers. So basically, the fifth city, city of Lublin, in our network, that would be a wonderful expression of the idea of coming together to shake hands. I'm extremely grateful and I'm proud that Lublin. Soon,、uh, uh, th- that it works on the idea of solidarity, of international solidarity for the persecuted、uh, artists.、Um, thank you very much. If I may,、uh, if I may say something for the very end of my uh, 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 voice.、Mm. Thank you very much for holding this panel. Serdecznie pozdrawiam Lesię i wszystkich. My wholehearted welcome go to Lesia and for all icon grantees or participants. They are source. You are source of inspiration. You are huge potential of each of the city and its communities. For each city who accepts, who decides to be a host. And as lately、uh, has was said by one of our residents in private conversation with him, 
we all flow in the same uh, on the same boat. But the problem is our part of boat is this time a little bit safer. But it's one boat, and it's only one part of the boat. We have global processes, we have global threats, and participation of cities in the network is a very good test, and a micro-test, but it's a very good test for various procedures, readiness, resistance, uh, uh, in relation to various situations which are not fiction, which are not, which may happen uh, daily reality, just in the nick of time. Uh, a lot of poles have this direct uh, influ direct uh, experience of help for, uh, for, for displaced uh, people, and certainly we can rely on this experience. Many, many thanks for having me, and wholehearted welcomes from uh, Krakow, from uh, Villa de Cius. I just want if I anyone else to step in. Thank you from from Icon and from Stavanger and Norway. And first, I will congratulate you with a fantastic conference, and and um, and and in particular this this event. Uh, it's really impressive for me to be able to take part in my only trying to to speak English and then be able to communicate with you. And I think also from the audience, the questionable language is very important. That, that, but I think that already we can sense that this issue is taken very seriously and professionally care of by the city of Lublin. And, and I also want to, uh, together with my great colleagues from Krakow, I cannot do anything else but welcome you very, very warmly into the ICON community and, and, and to really to, to start this um, it's a, it's a challenging path, but I think it's a very, very rewarding path to work work together with us and 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 uh, take part in in uh, this the work we do together for freedom of expression and for solidarity. So I'm very, very glad that I could be able to join you here, and I hope to be able to come to Lublin soon and maybe then sign the agreement so that uh, Lublin can be a full fledged member in Icon as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, many, many thanks. I can't say more. For your contribution, both officially and personally, of course, and especially for what you have said, uh, Robert, about your openness to assist us. I uh, had such impression after our last conversation online we had, we had together. Uh, so yes, we, we will definitely feel more safe as a city uh, being assisted by our uh, older brother in this process. So thank you again. Thank you again so much for participating, for being with us, uh, for uh, taking the inconvenience to participate online. What That's the world we live in. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, all the participants here and everybody who has participated with us online uh, and hope to see you soon. Uh, maybe, well, Hope uh, as a new member of the ICON network, maybe, who knows. We'll try to make it as quick as possible. Thank you so much again, and see you soon.